blue moon, blue moon, blue moon, I'll keep it shining bright. Blue moon, keep on shining bright. You gotta bring it back to my baby tonight. Blue moon, I'll keep it shining bright. Oh, I said blue moon, I'll keep it shining bright. Shine on the one that's gonna let me blue. I said blue moon, I'll keep it shining bright. Keep on shining. Shine on the walls, gone and left the blue. Well, it was on the well, hello. This time I'm reporting from the National Corvette Museum. I'm not exactly a Corvette guy, but since I fixed my neighbor's Corvette, I kind of uh, got a fund of this brand. So I figured I'm going to stop by here. We were riding on the freeway next to it anyway. So um, I wanted to show you guys if you, in case you can't come and visit this museum, you uh, may just watch this video and maybe you like it so much that you actually want to see this on your own so this statue is outside in front of the museum it was built uh, in 1996 for the uh, Atlanta Olympics so the museum is behind it let's go in and look around as we entered you can see uh, several of these new cars they are showcasing here and then one is actually uh, got started up I guess they're showing the features in it. You can hear the exhaust sound out of it. So there is a very odd color, which uh, we Europeans don't know where to put. The last time I seen a color and like this, it was in Germany on the uh, trash trucks. So I guess these uh, colors are coming back and they're putting it on sports cars too. That's uh, for me, it's a very odd thing. So we are starting with the early one, with Harley Earl, who uh, designed this car. Looks like it's a 1953, it's chassis number 003. If you really want to read more about it, please stop the video and you can do so here. So to me as a European car guy, what comes through is that uh, it's a composite body, just like on a Trabant. The Trabant, uh, instead of the fiberglass, they used uh, uh, cotton actually cotton fiber and the cotton fiber never cracks a Corvette cracks uh, after so many years but a Truby, a Truby never will I'm not saying that a Trabant is any better than a Corvette that's don't, don't get me wrong that's not the case I'm just saying that the technology where they use the German factories out of the necessity it was way ahead of uh, the fiberglass design but if you look at this um, it's all in pieces it's very simple design actually kind of crude for me we are starting with a proof of concept car uh, this is made out of fiberglass i guess they were trying to see if the fiberglass is a viable option to build cars out of this one is out of 1946. when the war finished in europe there were still a lot of troops were stationed in germany and england and other places so people who were stationed there they actually start buying these little British sports cars and that's where the little uh, sports car craze started from I love the color on this thing <laughs> I would probably rather have this than a Corvette but that's just me I don't know if you ever heard about the Crossley radio but the guy who were doing the Crossley radio and the radio stations that one day he decided he's gonna make cars now the first engines were actually pressed out from uh, sheet metal and then the two sheet metal parts were joined together and then that's, that was the engine block. Later on they figured it out that it's not a viable option so they start uh, casting the blocks. But if you look at the front it looks just like a, just like a little uh, bug eye sprite which came just about nine years later than this car. So we just entered the 1950s. You can see a 53 Corvette on the right and the Co biggest competition of 55 uh, Thunderbird and it's a really nicely uh, built up diorama and some Corvette bicycle on the left the blue one I never even knew that that was uh, a thing before you can see it right there there was a store owner in Maine who purchased this car brand new he drove it for five years but the wife didn't like it at all so he decided to uh, build a tomb in one of his uh, buildings so that's where the car sat all the way until 2000 when they found it so this car has original paint and barely any miles on it you can see the misperfections in the paint and since the 
body hasn't really seen sun, therefore you don't really see any cracks in it, nor it was moving too much. So it's a, it's, it's, this is an old original Corvette for you. And this looks like an authentic repair shop from the air. Um, now we actually uh, went up to the end of the 50s, early 60s. You can see the gas pumps from that air and this really nice uh, shop equipment that's on 500 over there. Now that I'm really excited about. I'd really, really like to have one of those in my shop. We got some new tires that you can buy. And of course there is a Corvette, which I assume at that time it didn't really need any repair, just some uh, barely any maintenance. What I really appreciate in these cars that they run like an American car. You don't really need to do much with it and it's just gonna keep going. A European car always gonna need some attention and specialized tools and all kind of stuff. A Corvette is crude and easy and simple and it's just gonna go no matter what. This is a timestamp from uh, the St. Louis factory. Looks like they're putting a stingray on the frame. Uh, please disregard these little poles here, but that's supporting the body over it. You can see it's got that coveted uh, manual shifter under. And in front of it, the small block Chevy. I love the tires too. That's just the, the kind of tire this car is supposed to have. I really can appreciate that. And then there is another one in front of it, which was already completed and going out to the uh, showroom. And talking of a showroom, there you go. This is what you were able to see if you went into a, a Chevy dealer and see a 60, you wanted to buy a 67 Brett with the racing stripe in the front. Now that I like, that I like. And it's got the side muffler on it in P yellow. Yeah, that's, that's just great. I love that. And next you see a very nice uh, silver metal split window from 63. It says uh, fuel injected. I don't know how successful the fuel injection was, but um, you can see that uh, a, a Corvette doesn't have to be uh, convertible in order to look nice. I, I can really appreciate that split window and the whole the way the whole thing looks like. This is a German color though. That that silver is uh, first appeared before the war in uh, Svico where they had this uh, silver bullet uh, speed racer car. Uh, that was the first time. And then Germans uh, continuously used that color, but I guess in 1963, it was the color to use on this car. And here's a very European looking Corvette race car. I, I like the color, the way it looks. I guess they were touting the fuel injection on it, on the side. It's from 1957. They call this the uh, Corvette SS. You can look inside. Very tiny mirror on the back. I don't know how you've seen anything from it. You had to cut out the uh, for your elbows so you, your elbow would fit. And this thing here, that's just totally amazing. <laughs> I got a little bug eye sprite. I built something like this on it, but um, not in this extent. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of this? They call this one the Mako Shark. It's a concept car. While one of the designers were in the uh, islands of Bimini, he really liked the way the sharks looked like, so he went home and uh, designed one of these. This looks like an oddity, but it looks great the way it sits here in the museum. Got the wood grain panels inside. This paint job really adds to the whole view. Yeah, it's... It's fantastic, out of this world, I would say. Very new concept of side muffler, because it looks like it's an actual muffler there. You can see a couple of, couple of uh, design cars, like a concept uh, cars, what they were making like models of to see how it's gonna look like. That looks very odd. This is part of the, uh, I guess that's the mid-engine concept model. And then you can see a newer one with the uh, ironing board on the back. It's a 2019 ZR1. This is actually, you can use that ironing board, unlike some Japanese cars, which are a front-wheel drive, and then <laughs> they put this thing on the back. 
I guess this car goes plenty fast enough to be able to use this, use the benefits of that um, fins or wings on the back. Now we're going to enter the exhibition. We're going to showcase uh, what happened in 2014 on February 12th at 5.39 a.m. That's the time when the uh, ground opened up and swallowed half of the museum here. So you can see on the uh, television how they're pulling out all these cars uh, which made it down. Uh, we're going to just get into that hall just a second and you can see the big hole that opened up underneath. There are several caves around here. They call them the Mammoth Caves. If you ever come this way, make sure you look those up. Unfortunately, those caves actually went all the way uh, under the museum. I don't know how they didn't see it when they built the museum, but uh, it was there. And now uh, a whole bunch of cars got demolished because of that. So all these precious cars ended up in there. Look at the vault. The first one is a C1 first generation Corvette. They made these cars between 1953 and 1962. This, this one is also a, still a C1 Corvette from 1962. They made 14,531 in 62. They offered it in seven different colors. This is a first owner car and unfortunately fall into the hole when the whole thing collapsed. And this nice blue one is from 1967. Uh, that's the first year when they moved the parking brake uh, between the seats. And this car has a 390 uh, horsepower engine with a posi traction and white wall tires. This one is a 1955 V8 and this was the answer to the T-Bird, even had the same color. In the side badge where it says Chevrolet, the letter V is actually larger than the rest to showcase that it does actually has a V8 engine. This one is a 95 Indy Pace car, a C4, has a 300 horsepower LT1 engine. This was an experimental car used by the Proving Grounds. They made 527 replicas at that year. The next one is a 1998 Indy Pace car, made 1,163 limited edition Indy Space cars, uh, Pace cars, and this is one of five which was allowed for factory use only. This white one is a C6. They made it between 2005 and 2013. And while Chevy was fighting for survival, uh, the vet was pushed quite heavily on, on customers and they listened what the customers wanted. And they were very successful with that. This nice blue Corvette was from 1969, donated by Donald Messner. He donated 10 different cars to the museum. This one's sporting a 427 with 435 horsepower. Now you see the third generation Corvette from 1982. This was the first kind of car what was built entirely in the Bowling Green factory in Kentucky. This beautiful uh, seventh generation Corvette from 2019 was the last manual Corvette came down from the assembly line. There was one more car came behind it in 2019 and that was an automatic but they they decided not to make any more manual transmission corvettes this 1992 corvette was the one millionth corvette made this was one of the eight cars swallowed by the sinkhole then it got rebuilt this is a malcolm connor corvette special he was a huge dealer in new jersey and they made 50 of those cars to commemorate him and this one looks like a 1968 ostrovet an aerodynamic study they were looking at how slippery this car can be. This is the one and only survival um, out of the 48 cars what they built for testing uh, in 1983. This next car is an oddball. It's never supposed to be a Corvette. It's supposed to be a GT. They named it in 1973 the XP987 GT. And it had a rotary engine with two rotors in it. That's a very oddball thing. And you can actually buy them, uh, but they never really made too many of them. But here is one from the Lone Star Corvette Club. Several countries in the world actually driving on the opposite side as we are. So this one is a right-hand drive C8 Corvette uh, for the uh, Japanese South African English market. This Z6 from 2023 puts out 670 horsepower. 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. And another experimental version from 1965, XP819. It was a rear engine Corvette with a 327 engine putting out 350 horsepower. 
Still being a second generation Corvette from 1967, sporting a Stinger hood and a 427 engine. This is Libby's Corvette, who got this car for good grades in college. Man, if I would have got one of these cars, I would have had good grades too. The year was 1978. This was the 25th anniversary for Corvette. That was also the first year for them to pacing the Indy 500. Most of those cars came in the anniversary silver color. This white car uh, called the Snake Skinner 2 from 1989. They were trying to make every effort to make it a fast car. They removed all kind of parts from it. And finally a prototype from 1990. It's a ZR1 with an active suspension. Now, if you look around, you can see all these Hall of Fame people who um, helped GM, Corvette, or a really uh, big name for the museum. They still have some surface, so if you want to volunteer or do something significant for the Corvettes, then uh, your place is here. As you exit the museum just before the uh, gift shop, um, they always have some uh, exhibitions of something weird, something unusual. This time when we were there, they had these custom cars. This one named the Cosmic Invader. Look at all these colors and stuff. It's all totally 1970s. Um, it's just incredibly, <laughs> incredibly weird. And at the same time, some super nice car. I mean, look at this craziness, total craziness. This is called the Night Cruiser. It's a 1951 Mercury. Uh, represents a genuine 1950s street cruiser. Looks like you got some shaved lights and all the goodies. Car, the owner, he is the one who actually painted the car. He built several cars when he was in high school and later on. You can see he even shaved the uh, handles, the door handles. And then we have a Batmobile. <laughs> It looks like a big turbine engine just sticking out in the uh, business end of this car. And look at this. Wouldn't you want to have one? I mean, it would be a great car to go to the grocery store or some other place or go to your high, high school reunion with the gigantic fins and an airplane-like cockpit. And how about this? Um, I wonder what was going in there. It's probably some cooling port for the uh, backside of the engine or something. Yeah, but talking about custom cars, this is an outlandish Americana, a, 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 total, a, a total craziness here. This car would be mine. I probably would install a real jet engine in it. Uh, look at this tail cone. Looks like a real one, but I'm not sure how real that is. This guy was Carl Casper, who was a Corvette enthusiast and custom car builder. He put Corvette engines into his custom cars, what he built. And he liked Corvette so much, he said he's going to rework it. And he made this Turbo Shark. It started in 1964 and finished it in 1966. As soon as the uh, car was unveiled, MPC models, they uh, started to put out kits of this car and become the best-selling model kits of all times for them. And then other marvelous uh, job from Carl Casper, the popcorn wagon. He was a classic car restorer and the 1904 horse-drawn popcorn wagon inspired him to build this car. Again, the MPC model car uh, manufacturer went crazy and they started to manufacturing these cars in model forms or kit forms. And many uh, kids actually get inspiration for custom builds and other jobs. But look at this thing. It's just incredibly, <laughs> incredibly shiny and there's all kind of things on it. And uh, yeah, I guess maybe you can actually get a popcorn out of it too if you want. But look at all these details that so extravagant, only in America uh, kind of thing. It's just, uh, yeah, there's nowhere else in the world you would see this. And then we got a classic traditional dragster. Incredibly long front, an engine right in front of the person who's driving it, a uh, minor blower on it, and uh, off we go. Uh, I just hope it's going to stay in that little frame and then hope it's gonna stop at the end. And another fantastic creation from him, uh, from Carl, it's a paddy wagon. It's based on a 1910 Model T. Also become a very good selling MPC model. Thank you for uh, joining me on this little adventure. If you are driving through Kentucky, make sure you stop at this museum and you can tell that you've been to the Corvette Museum. See you guys next Friday, bye.